standing on the face of history. <laughs> Who's more historic than you, Bob Ryan? Also, humbling on the face of a predator. We got to talk about that. Let's go around the horn. Is that legal? I want to do that to Bill Plasky a couple of times. It's Around the Horn, the show of competitive banter. Here's Tony Rielli. You may never have thought about 16 and 0 before, but now that it's in play for the first time ever, let's delve the playoffs by definition. You're playing good teams. This finals matchup, a historically potent team. Warriors' margin of victory for fo 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 and three so far, 16.1. That's the best ever. So, if tonight happens. What is the case for and what is the case against these Warriors being the best team of all time? Bill Plaschke, start us off. I don't know how you have a case against it except maybe using the word Michael Jordan, but other than that, no, they have to be considered the best team of all time. This is the longest postseason streak of any sport in any, in any history. This is, again, the biggest the, uh, differential in NBA history. They're getting, like you said, they're beating teams by 16 points a game. They're 30-1 and one in their last 31 games. Nobody's touching. They're, they're certainly the most dominant team in history, and if you consider this as the best basketball age in history, this is the best team in history. Right, guys, so if they win. And if they win tonight, it's going to be hard not to think back to last season. But if not for Draymond Green and that suspension, they probably knock out LeBron James and the Cavs in five games. So that's 73 wins. You're working on a third straight championship. That Draymond Green moment, to me, kind of hurts it a little bit when you start getting into the greatest team ever. Statistically, they might be there, but it's not three straight games. Well, the Draymond Green moment is last year, though. We're talking about right now. We're going to view this as one team, one season. 96 Bulls would be another team. The 83 76ers, of course. There's Lakers and Celtics teams from Lakers. multiple decades. This team right here, Frank, point blank. Greatest team ever if they win tonight, sweep through the postseason? No, because like, I still would put the Chicago Bulls winning the 72 games and an NBA championship. The time to start talking about that was last season had they closed it out. Blackstone, how about you? Well, the, the argument for would be the fact that if they do pull off this sweep, they will have swept the defending uh, champions who themselves lost only one game coming into the finals, who themselves are stocked with starting with LeBron James, the best player on the planet, and two all-stars in Kevin Love and Kyrie Irving. So that's pretty good right there. But I would have to think back to my years of watching the Bulls and Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen and Dennis Rodman. By the way, I'd love to see those three match up on the wings against these guys uh, mm -hmm. and, and the role that they went on just beating everybody, older teams, younger teams, superstars. Uh, I, I okay. still can't get over that team. And now we go to our Hall of Famer, Bob Ryan. Go ahead, answer the question. This is going to be the, the legitimate answer here. Oh, there well, thank would you. be no questioning the accomplishment. <laughs> it would be an accomplishment for the ages. It would be something that no one could top if they were to go fo 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 and then they were to do what they've done against, as Kevin says, a quality opponent. However, let us not confuse accomplishment with artistic, artistic ability. And it is, it is, the fact of the matter is there are other teams in the past that could have played them, and in my judgment, could have easily beaten them. Not mm. easily, of course, but could have mm. beaten them. And there are many teams I would put Who? in that Let's argument. Let's throw out the but, teams right now. Well, I mean, you, you, the, the 01 Lakers, the uh, 86 okay. Celtics, the 87 Lakers uh, are all teams that... And I don't want to hear about uh, the difference in the three-pointer because anybody can adjust to a circumstance if they have to. Okay. Now, the point is the accomplishment would be clear. But this, don't extrapolate that to saying that they would be the best team of all time. This is interesting to me, time. Bob, because you heard what Steve Kerr said today. And he was talking, he was speaking very sarcastically. All the teams from the past, they would all kill us. The game never matures, never uh, progresses. He, he's basically saying, of course, the guys who play the game now are better than the guys, because they're quicker, they're taller, they're stronger, whatever, than the guys who played it 30 years ago. You oppose that. They're not necessarily taller. These teams are sh they're, they're going without centers. You're seeing small ball as the reason they're so good, not big ball. They're not taller. Well, oh, by no, that no, extent, no, no. I meant Durant is playing the game as a taller man, Durant a game that was being played at no six Durant's, foot four, six foot there five. There were no Durant's. 30 years ago, okay? I grant you that. There were no Durants. And guess what? There's no Mikhail today. There's no Walker okay, today. Okay. There's no Magic today. So uh, let's remember that. Flash, you back in. There's no Curry back then either, though, Bob. I mean, I think you, you right? can't match the depth. Magic? You can't match the depth of the Warriors. You just cannot. No other team has those four guys like they have, and the way they play, I, don't, I just don't think you can match that. I, no, I'm sorry. Some of these guys are overrated through history. 
You, you match them up today. You want a T.O., Bob? Take a T.O. Go ahead. <laughs> depth. Nobody has depth compared to the depth in the 80s when people yeah. were routinely bringing all-stars off the bench. There isn't a team in the league today that could even remotely dream about Frank, bringing Frank, I saw the last word on this, then we'll move the on. Bench. I, I Jeez, still think sometimes depth. depth is overrated. Just look at the Golden State <laughs> starting five, which is all you need. They added the second-best right, player depth. to a team that won 73 games last season. They have an unbelievable team. But, I, you know, Bob left out one team, the 96 Chicago Bulls. That was saying. a great team that closed the deal. Remember this, too. They got a bit of a break. Kawhi Leonard, up 23, got hurt in that game, game one of the Western Sure, Conference. sure, and then that should be said. Okay, you saw Vegas put the line that, that the Warriors would be a six-point favorite over those Bulls. And since we're playing this uh, hypothetical situation, that Bulls team, if it was a seven-game series, is loaded with guys in their 30s, whereas this Warriors team a little bit younger. Real quick, everything you guys just said, yes or no, does it apply if they lose tonight and win in five? No. Uh. See, okay, yes. so you think the applies. sweep yes. is important. Yes. All right, you Still think the sweep applies. is important. Yes. Let's move on. Let's talk about how you view Durant, since we just talked about the team. He said years ago, I'm tired of being second. That was clearly on his mind when he signed with Golden State. But there's the nagging pull that he joined a team that was already championship level, Frank. As you just said, 73-win team last year, and they would have won, in your opinion, without the Draymond suspension. Durant's tweet from seven years ago, he, he wasn't... On guys, he was on guys, I should say, for joining a championship late. Now some think he did that. How will history view a Durant title? I think down the road it's not going to matter. If he wins multiple titles, that's all everyone's going to remember. I agreed with Kevin Durant's tweet from years ago. I don't like the fact that he left Oklahoma City. He was on a contending team, and if he had played better last year in Game 6 against the Warriors, he would have been in the finals. But it's hard to argue with the results. He's on a great team. They're going to be great for a long time. And if he wins two, three, four, or five titles, that's all everyone's going to remember. KB, this title in particular, should they win tonight or in the rest of this series, how do you think you'll, you'll view Durant? Well, I mean, I think he'll get an asterisk, and the reason he'll get the asterisk is just because of what Frank just said, but also because people will compare him to what Miami put together when LeBron went there, which was not a team that was in the NBA Finals the year before and had 70 wins. And they'll even look back to, the, to, uh, to Bob Ryan's Celtics when they put a three together, which was in a similar type of situation. And they'll always compare Durant, I think, to that and say, well, anybody, and I think we heard that said earlier today, could have won if they had, uh, any great player could have won if they joined this So you're warrior. putting an asterisk on Durant. I'm saying, I think people will. Bob, yeah, I mean, do you, think, it has to be part do you of think that's the case? There will never be 100% approval of his action. There will never be 100% approval of, of LeBron's action. People will still for, won't forgive the decision. So that those people will always exist. I think in general, history will be kind to Durant. And I think if they, if they continue on this path and win two or three of the next four, uh, it's just going to be a rewarding of excellence and an accomplishment that everyone will appreciate. Bill everyone, Flash. most reasonable people There's, will appreciate. KB, there is no asterisk. There is no footnote to this. This is the biggest, one of the biggest sit-down and shut-ups in sports history. The world was against <laughs> this guy. Everybody says, oh, he's joining the bandwagon. Guess what? He is the bandwagon. He went there. He became the bandwagon. He's, he's not only a part of the team, he's leading the team. He'll be the first person to, to win finals MVP after coming to the first year on a new team in over 30 years in NBA history. And, and defensively, he's been unbelievable defensively. I think all the criticism stops. Everything ends now. It should end now. No asterisk. He did the right thing. KB, did these guys sway it, you in any way? Well, I'm not putting the asterisk there. What I'm saying is there's going to be one there by a lot of people. And the reason is because you can just go back and read the stories and listen to us discuss when Durant made his decision to go to the Warriors. We were stunned. We were shocked. People said right then and there, they're not going to root for the Warriors. And everybody handed them the trophy on that very day. So that's what I'm saying. We didn't do that with LeBron. And that's we didn't why do I said, baby. In some ways, this was almost a lose-lose proposition for him. Either he, he loses the title and then he's the biggest loser, or they win and people still uh, begrudge that. I saw the last word, then we'll move on. Ke Kevin Durant is the bandwagon. Someone remind Bill Plasky they won a championship, they won 73 games, and they should have won back-to-back -back titles before he arrived. How can you say Not that like he this, is the bandwagon? Not right now. Right now, in this finals, right now, he, you know, he owns a place. It's his team. Right now, it's his team. I'll say what. I'll, I'll, this, is, this is how I feel about this. You people are responsible for this, by the way. By the way, you got on people true. like Charles Barkley for never winning a title. You made it the and most the important thing in the world. It, it, nothing else matters if you don't win a title. That's right. And it led to decisions like we've seen. You, in yourself points. Like you people. You're right. We'll move on. Uh, let's talk from the Cavs' perspective. 
What about a sweep tonight or even a win tonight and a loss in Oakland on Monday? Bob, how do you think history will view a loss for LeBron? Uh, I think they'll look at the team that beat them and, and applaud them. But I think what it's going to uh, history, what's going to happen is they're going to have to get better if they want to beat this team. And they know this. It doesn't matter whether they get swept or whether they lose in five. It's going to be a bigger, bigger embarrassment to get swept. But regardless, they're going to be looking at themselves and say, well, we're not we're not good enough. And we need to get better. LeBron specifically, though, that would be his fifth loss. In oh, LeBron, NBA people, oh, you know, once again, people, people, people. This guy may, may very well wind up averaging a triple double. And, and the, the average person that, that, that doesn't understand that without him, you know, you fill in the blank. Come on. The guy's still the best player in the world. Kevin Blackstone. There's still a lot of schadenfreude out there for LeBron James. We all know it. And there are people Ooh, who Schadenfreud. look at this and they will, they will downgrade him and any argument that he's the greatest player of all time or could be a greatest player of all time because. Because this will be the second time he's been swept in the uh, NBA Finals. They were totally overlooked the fact that that first time he was in the NBA Finals, he dragged a team, the second best player of which was probably Daniel Gibson, at least in the uh, Finals play, into, <laughs> into the Finals uh, as a 22-year-old. So it'll be unfair, and they're going to have to make some big changes, obviously, Frank in the Isola. offseason. Yeah, two weeks ago it was, is he, is he better than Michael? And now it's Kevin Durant. Yep. The torch has been passed. So <laughs> LeBron's going to be okay. Even though that record right now, it's going to be 10 games under 500 if he loses. Here's my thing. If they do lose, they're going to make some big moves because he's under contract for one more year. So Ka uh, Cleveland is going to be all in next season. So big moves. Well, okay, let's talk about these big moves then. What moves are there to make for a team that's already a super team? Let me hear this. Well, hang on. We did hear about maybe Paul George. Could they do something with Kevin Love and Paul George? Or how about if Carmelo gets a buyout oh, from the Carmelo. Knicks and George could? Okay. What's wrong with that? They could use a player like that. <laughs> they could have used him the last three minutes of game three, that's for sure. Bill Plaschke, you want to uh, go after that, please? I'm, just, I'm amazed the show went as far as ten minutes before Frank mentioned Carmelo and <laughs> Kudos to you, Frank. Kudos to you. No, Le uh, LeBron takes. LeBron does take a hit here. He was going to be the greatest player of all time, and now he's still the best player in the world, but he's the first MVP to lose five finals. He'll be the first one to do that. I think that takes a hit. I know he was dealing with the impossible, and his team was outmanned and outplayed, but history, history is history, and I just think really? that he will. Really? He, he we will just had a conference. We just spent the first ten minutes of the segment talking about how the Warriors could be the greatest, the greatest team, team of all time. time. You, said it, you said it yourself that they are, for you, the greatest team of all time, and they sweep, yeah. and now you're going to hold that against LeBron losing it. Some somebody's got to win, it's, it's and win. somebody's got to lose. <laughs> that 07 team was terrible, Bill. Give him a break. What, he shouldn't have got there? You'd feel better about it if he didn't get to the finals that saying. first year? Come on. We've been hard. We're, we're taking a break. Yo, it out, guys. Sweep tonight? You making it? Make that call right now. Yeah. No. Sweet, sweet, sweet. No. Act like you're paying attention, fellas. Buy or sell. Penguins, one win away. Six. Nothing last night, but here's what everybody's talking about. Sidney Crosby grounding, pounding, ground rounding. Kids eat by the pounding. P.K. Subban. Penguin's third goal came 90 seconds later. The water bottle came after that. He said he wasn't meaning to throw it on the ice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bill, how did Crosby get away with this? I'm, I'm stunned. It's almost like the uh, uh, referee said, you know what, it's your house, it's your night, it's your, it's your league, you take over. It's almost like they're making up for all, a lot of years he got, uh, didn't, you know, he got hit a lot and didn't get to fight back. Now he's fighting back. It's almost like they're embracing the fact that he's fighting back. I was stunned. There was a I mean, ref, it's been two feet away of this. I saw the, how, how did Crosby get away with this? And, and you said it right, he got away with it because in that play right there with P.K. Subban, both players are getting minor penalties there. And at the time, Pittsburgh's winning 2 nothing. That should have been a power play for Nashville. Instead, at full strength, the score goes to 3 nothing. And shouldn't Sidney Crosby be a little sensitive to head injuries? He's had a history of concussions. He missed a game in the second round against Washington after he took a nasty hit. That was surprising. Kevin Blackstone? For all those who believe that Sidney Crosby is a dirty player, there you go. That was an incident that will make you believe that. Now, I don't think he's a dirty player, and he's gotten away with some things. He's he probably taken it. a lot more. Well, he's, he probably taken a lot more shots. He took a hard shot against the, the Caps from Niskanen, uh, knocked him out of a yep. game. He should be able to defend himself, but that was a dirty Niskanen play. Niskanen was out of that game the second he had exactly. that shot, though. Well, let, let yeah, me ask right. you it this way, Bob Ryan. This is going to be, this is a marathon replay today, tomorrow, probably through Sunday, game six. Um, how should the NHL feel about that, Bob? They should be very embarrassed because what he did with, uh, by banging a man's head on the uh, ice 
I, I've never seen that one. We've seen a lot of crazy things in, in that game, but I've never seen that one. That that to me was to me that should be a game misconduct. That that's way over the line. That's not a fight. That's not a fight. That's a savage act. I'm sorry, and uh, I don't understand uh, at all. I'm uh, as mystified as anyone else why he wasn't punished. When we come back Monday, is it to celebrate the Penguins' repeat or to get excited about a game seven, Bill Plaschke? Oh, if the Penguins repeat that, the Nashville goalie's a little weary, a little mentally tired, and I've been telling you all week, Tony. <laughs> you know, you've been sitting on that. Here, here's your points for now, yes, Frank Isola. Yeah, now, it's going to be a seven. The Penguins play everybody in seven. The Caps, the Senators, now the Predators. Blackestone? Penguins, not celebrating it in D.C., though. Bob Ryan? I think there'll be a big celebration in the game six in Nashville. All right, so now everybody's got now home ice doesn't mean anything after Nashville's 9-1 and one and then their first 10 games at home. We'll move on. USA 2, Trinidad and Tobago, nothing. This story is about the hype around Christian Pulisic. I'm here to oppose that hype. I'm here to improv on that hype. Yes, and the hype, and he's the best player in our country, period. You know, for Paul Carr, look at the last eight goals for the U.S. men's national team. And this 18-year-old has some onions on him, too. Look at the quote about Sunday's game in Mexico. We're going to come out of there with a win, too. Frank, how much are you spending to buy Pulisic here? That's what I want to know. Oh, I'm buying a lot. This is one of the top 18-year-olds in the world, not just the best American player. As they would say in Great Britain, absolutely brilliant. This guy is an attacking player. He's, uh, he can control the ball. He plays with confidence. He's 18. He's only getting better, folks. We're lucky to have him. So what's a fair expectation, and what's pie in the sky? Can it be internationally be one of the great players in the world? He, he plays for a top team in Europe already, and he's only 18. He has a chance to be a top 10 player in the world when he's in his mid-20s. Yeah, B? Yeah, I'd have to agree with all of that. I mean, the impressive thing about what has happened to him is that he's being incubated in the German league at the top tier. Yeah. And that's what needs to happen with, with uh, U.S. players right now. And right now, you know, you've got about nine players, I think. He's one of nine players that are playing uh, in the European league. So we should and have high expectations. you say there's value in that. There's ultimate oh, value absolutely. in that. absolutely. Yeah. No question. Bob Ryan? That graphic you showed it yeah. says it all. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's startling. Go, 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 go. It says, go! Go! I mean, we has a, he has a chance to be our first true international football star. I didn't think the register Bob Ryan had went up that high, but now now we know. All right, Flash, get by you. Can we all just calm down a little bit and let him do something like appear and do something in the World Cup? I mean, I got for all well, of he's only 18. So he wasn't even old enough does, to drive right, in the last right. World Cup. He hasn't even been in the World Cup. I have two words for all of you all. Freddie, adieu. Freddy Adu. That's okay. a two-word All right. And then that's, well, that's a fair thing that's, to say. That's, fair. that's, that's what people always say, say when, when there is hype even Let's around wait. an American player, Let's at least wait. the last 10 for the He's playing in Germany for a top team. Yep. Come on. World Cup. Frank, Sunday's a big game versus Mexico. You saw what Pulisic said. He's saying we're going to win that game. <laughs> they like that coming from him? And what do you need to see from him in the Well, team this is going to be great because we've never won a World Cup qualifying match at Azteca Stadium in Mexico City. Remember something else. We know the political climate. USA in Mexico on Sunday, that's a must-watch. Flashkey, you want something real quick? Yeah, but that match doesn't mean anything to us. We're already our World Cup qualifying is almost set now. Because we beat Trinidad and Tobago, that match is not as important to the Americans. It's you don't much think more important it's as important? You don't think it's, I mean, no, the, no. have you looked at the hex? Nobody Flash cared about Trinidad and Tobago. No, People but will be watching the Mexico. qualifying thing right, just I takes the pressure that. off us. Right. Flashkey. Uh, there was a quick horn there. And Blaschke's advancing here versus Isola. Blackestone, Ryan. Wow. Weekend starts right now. Cheddar Bill, Frankie Ice. Showdown next. You're listening to Love Advice with Leanne. Caller, you're on the air. Uh, hi, Leanne. Long-time listener, first-time caller. <laughs> Why, in your professional opinion, do you never take my calls off the air? Is this Carl? Yep, it's Carl. I mean, we had a few dates. Everything was great. I thought, uh... Well, you know, when you switch to GEICO, you could save a lot of money on car insurance. Okay, awesome. You should call them. I will. GEICO, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer. Last year, I sold a showdown, and it's three-on-three three basketball at the Olympics. IOC voted yesterday. It starts in 2020 in Tokyo. It'll be half-court. Losers out, ones and twos, up to 21. After that, we, we don't know anything about it yet. So, Bill, first, make a ruling. Are you four or against? And who are your dream three? 
Call me old school, Tony, but I think sports in the Olympics should actually be sports. This is not a sport. I'm totally <laughs> against it. This is a gimmick. This is, they don't do this. I don't know what they're, they're making something up. Are they that desperate? However, if they do do it, I got, the, I got your best three-on-three team right, right outside my backyard here. Been watching for six years together. Chris what Paul, Blake Griffin, what DeAndre Jordan. They, that's, that's I can't, they do for get, a I can't oh, get tug of war in the Olympics, but we're going to have a gimmick like this in the Olympics. I, I don't like it. But if I can't make Przingis a naturalized citizen, I can't have Carmelo on the team. <laughs> I'm going to go with LeBron, Durant, okay. yeah. Steph Curry, yeah. and I'll be the fourth guy. Klaski's trying to lose in the conference medal. semis. So you, there's pros, right? <laughs> it's not just amateurs, it's pros. I want Shea Nets. I want this out on blacktop. We'll move on. Showdown two. A reporter asked John Harbaugh, who would walk out of a cage alive? The Gruden brothers, the Ryan brothers, or the Harbaugh brothers? Frank, who you got? The Ryan brothers are all hype. I go with the guys that wear khakis. I love the Harbaugh brothers. They are not losing this. Jim and John all the way. The Ryan brothers are hype only if they're not in a cage. Or you, you see those guys in that bar, in that margarita bar the other night? Those are wild, crazy guys now. i got to go with the Ryan brothers because they'll do anything. We've seen it. We've seen it on, on, on the YouTube. little kids. Frank Isola, the rare double-double. He wins HQ. Whoa. He wins around the horn. Well, I don't need to tell you how much the New York Yankees love David Price. Who over the last two years, his ERA is over eight. He gave up hit number 3,000. To Derek Jeter. Last night he got shell. Gary Sanchez took him deep twice. But the big story is David Price in that $217 million contract with the Red Sox. He's not talking to the media except on days that he pitches. He's putting way too much energy into fighting with Bob Ryan and the boys up in Boston. It isn't worth it, David. Just go out and pitch because if you think they're hurting you now, wait until the postseason. And we know your record there. Be careful. That's going to do it, folks. Thanks for coming around. We're on a 71. That's fun. And a half-hour break. Things in life. We'll see you Monday around the horn.